Hello and welcome. Infrastructure will play a critical role in India's progress and that's well documented. Also, the role of firms like Balfour BT will be critical, who will bring the infrastructure expertise and the skills to build and manage large projects. I'm now joined by Mike Shaw, who heads Balfour BT in India, and let's talk to him about how he sees the India-UK corridor. Mike, uh, before we begin uh, on the India-UK corridor specifically, can you tell us a little more about how you see the current economic environment, particularly from your standpoint as a infrastructure services company? Well, I think uh, we've gone through quite a tough time over the last uh, last 12 months and uh, you know we've seen very little infrastructure projects and in the way of projects coming to the market probably with the exception of some metro projects and the ongoing rail projects coming out of Indian Railways and, uh, and other Indian Railways entities like RVNL and CORE but um, overall it's obviously been quite quiet and, uh, and, and we've seen very little very little in the way of major projects being awarded. Uh, having said that, you know, we do see this as an ongoing uh, issue probably through the elections and, uh, and we're, we're certainly hoping that by mid-2014 we'll see a pickup uh, in the infrastructure market. Right. Within infrastructure services, what is the kind of traction that you're seeing and in what areas? Yes, well certainly one of our biggest focuses uh, is in the rail sector. and. Uh, and we have been very actively bidding projects in that sector and uh, we're expecting to pick up um, one or two or three projects uh, this year uh, in that sector. So the rail sector is, is, is a target focus for us. We're obviously also looking with interest at the PPP market. Um, you know, obviously we, we're seeing the only way that the infrastructure will get delivered um, in order to satisfy the, the, the inherent growth in India is by engaging with the private sector. So we're, we're watching with interest uh, the PPP market to see how that will actually evolve in enabling or making it easier for, for private investment in these major infrastructure uh, deals. Um, other sectors that we're looking at, uh, as we see a, a large future, is in the urban infrastructure sector you know, if, if, if we really do get to that position that by 2030 we're going to have 40% of the population living in urban areas, this will be actually a, a significant uh, growth market over the next, uh, over the next uh, 20 years. And, and can you briefly outline for us what are the kind of challenges that you see ahead? Look, I, th I think the challenges for us uh, as an international company are how can we, how can we be competitive in the market and leverage our global capabilities and skills. Um, uh, what we've done in that particular case is we have, uh, we have built a very strong local senior management team uh, in the one hand in the, in the Balfour Beatty business, but we've also uh, formed an unincorporated joint venture with Tata Project to focus on the urban infrastructure markets. But generally, I, I think, I think the, key, the key really for us as an international company is is understanding the supply chain and making sure that when we do our business in this sector that our, our core codes of conduct uh, are embedded in the processes with our clients, our partners and our, and our supply chain uh, our supply chain suppliers and, uh, and contractors. And, and what are the tasks that you see ahead for the British business group and the overall Indo-British relationship particularly in the area of business? We, we are aware of the Bangalore-Mumbai Economic Corridor and, and we've been very actively participating in the preparation of the vision paper and, and interacting with uh, UKIBC and UKTI on this and we're actually very bullish about this as a, as a project. I think that, that there are immense opportunities for British companies introducing technology process and systems and there are opportunities to raise the bar in terms of quality on time delivery and of course safety uh, which are all, all very close to our hearts uh, so I do see good opportunities for British industry to to uh, to be participate in the infrastructure sector in in India but I think they have to go in with eyes wide open and and, and, and understand that this is it is a competitive market there's a lot of good Indian companies operating in the market and, uh, and we have to be selective in, in the projects which we choose to pursue. 
Mike, you seem to have managed a couple of very large and interesting projects. I noticed that you worked on the Petronas Towers, uh, amongst others. Uh, tell us a little more about uh, what you've learned there or any insights that you can share with us from having worked with such interesting large projects. Well, I will say that on, on most of those projects, large projects that we've worked, we were in a role that gave us the ability to have single point responsibility for delivery of those projects. Um, what I have noticed that in India, though, that, that, that strategy is somewhat different. Most of the clients choose to break their large projects down into manageable portions or, or various scopes and then, and then try to manage that themselves. I think our ability to introduce very good interface management skills and project management and scheduling skill sets uh, are the two areas that I think we could add a lot of value uh, in delivering these large projects. Uh, the other thing that I think that we did very, very well in these other projects is that we integrated well with the client's own organization. So it was a really, I'm a great believer in, in creating a teamwork environment and integrating, if you like, the teams between the the, uh, the project management, the construction delivery teams, and the and the clients teams, uh, so that we get the, the best end result. Um, and I, and I think there are some there are some uh, contractual and and organisational uh, things we could do to to add some value in India in terms of the way projects are structured, uh, which would I think give better value to the clients, and and ensure a better outcome. As we know. Most projects in India overrun the, the uh, delivery period, contract delivery period, and most of them, not all of them, suffer some quality issues. So, you know, we feel confident that those are the areas that we can actually certainly improve uh, on. And, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, trying to raise the bar in terms of safety, which I, I don't think is really, uh, is really quite there yet in India. Right, Mike, and can you tell us a little more about maybe a, one exciting in project that you've worked on uh, anywhere and one exciting project that you would like to work on in India? For me personally, um, I, I would probably say the, the, the Malaysia projects were, were probably the most exciting to work on. I think that, uh, that on, the, on the Petronas Towers project, um, we we added a lot of value there by bringing a very strong team in, integrating with the client's team. And, and we, when we actually finished that project, the client had a very good organisation that he got, could, could then, then go on and, and, and use and develop more projects. Uh, the other project which was really exciting was the Malaysia Airlines project at the KL International Airport, which was, was, a, was a major infrastructure job. Uh, pulling together the catering facility, the cargo facility, the engineering facilities and that went very smoothly and again it was very much a lot of close um, working with the client to, to make sure we understood their needs, develop a realistic brief with the client and then, and then deliver the project which we succeeded to deliver that on time and within budget which was a, which was a major achievement. If you look at projects in, in India that, that we would, would like to, to be involved in and, and have an overarching single point responsibility for, I, I guess um, some of the future rail projects would be good. Um, for example, uh, at, through Parsons Brinkerhof, we currently have a, have a role in Qatar on the, on the metro. Uh, which is an overall program management role, which is a, which is a good role for us there. And, and, and having a similar role here would be good. And likewise, uh, a full EPC role on either a, a, a rail project or an airport project would probably be, be the way to go for us. Uh, those are sort of the focus areas. But of course, you know, we will also be interested in looking at these um, urban infrastructure projects uh, because I guess our point of difference is the fact that we can offer an end-to-end -end service uh, right through from the, the front-end consultancy and feasibility through to construction delivery, uh, embed the operations and maintenance through the life cycle of the contract, and then uh, potentially on some projects take an infrastructure investment position as well. So 
So we've got a quite a good model in, in being able to, uh, to participate in various stages within the, in the, in the project life cycle. Right, Mike, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you very much.